If you watch this whole video, I am going to change your mind about music theory because it's not what you think it is and you're scared of it for all the wrong reasons. Imagine a world where basic things have no names and you're at a restaurant trying to get a waiter to give you a fork, but there's no word for fork. The word fork doesn't exist. You have to somehow communicate to the waiter who is very busy and doesn't have a lot of time that you need a fork. How are you gonna do it? That's the alternative to learning music theory. It's like this musical groundhog day where you're perpetually having to reinvent the wheel every single time you wanna do something musical or communicate with another musician. That sounds like a nightmare to me, but it doesn't have to be like this. They tell you to never insult your audience on YouTube, but the fact is that I have never met a more willfully ignorant group of musicians than metal guitar players. I think we just don't like being told what to do. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to just throw metal guitarists under the bus here. That's not fair. Really, it's all guitarists. It's all good. We see music theory as a restriction, as boundaries that are imposed by someone else. But that's just not what it is. The reason that you might see music theory as a restriction rather than being very freeing, which is what it actually should be, is because you think that it's prescriptive rather than descriptive. All that means is that you think that it is telling you what you should do or what you have to do, rather than just describing things that are. It's not like musical laws that were handed down on a stone tablet from the above. It's literally just hundreds of years of people trying things, figuring them out, and then giving them names. The first thing that we're gonna do to get you into the right mindset for this is we're not gonna call it music theory anymore. Throw that right out. It's names for sounds. That's what music theory actually is. A lot of the time when people say music theory, they're actually talking about the study of harmony, which is where all of those complicated names for chords and modes and scales and all of that come in. And really, it doesn't actually matter what it is that you call those things. It doesn't change the essence of a, a C major seven chord to call it C major seven. We gave the sounds names for the same reason that we give everyday items names, so that when you ask for a fork, the waiter doesn't bring you a samurai sword. If we called a samurai sword a fork, and a fork a samurai sword, and everybody knew that, then you'd be able to get the same thing that you need all the time. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't need to communicate with other musicians. Nobody I know knows music theory either, so what's the point? But that's the twist. In this metaphor, the waiter isn't another musician. The waiter is your brain. And the sounds that you're trying to retrieve are the ones from your mind, from your memory, stuff that you've heard before, stuff that you've played before and come up with, so that you can repeat the results from either other people's music or things that you've done before so that you can do it again. But right now, I am going to release your mind from the stranglehold that the idea of what you think music theory is has on your creativity. Music theory, names for sounds, is not prescriptive. It's only descriptive. There are no rules in music theory, zero. Not a single one. It's not there to tell you what to do. There's only the measurement of distances, names for that dis those musical distances between notes, and then a bunch of stuff that people do with those sounds that result from that. It's cataloging them, describing them, putting them into little, little boxes with names like, you know, like butterflies with pins stuck to them and a little Latin name underneath. It doesn't change how beautiful a monarch butterfly is because you know the name of it. It just describes it. The same way that the name of a chord just tells you what pitches are in it. So then you can know what other people have done with it. You can recognize that chord or scale or whatever out in the wild and you can uh, get an idea of what you can do with it. It's not gonna write the song for you. Music theory will not write your song for you. I know tons and tons of, of music theory. I have never used music theory to write a song. That's not even a real thing. People are like, oh, do you use theory to write a song? Oh, you just use theory, bro? I just write by feel. <laughs> That's an idea that just really doesn't even make any sense. Writing a piece of music that has any meaning to it at all is just a series of decisions that you have to make as the composer. 
And the only way that you can make those decisions is based on how that music makes you feel and where you're trying to get it to. You can't just theory your way into that. It, it can't be done. Music is really still kind of a magical thing. Nobody really understands why wiggly air translates into such strong emotional responses from people. Names for sounds is kind of just a bunch of recipes for little magical spells that you can cast on people and on yourself. But you don't have to do any of that. That's not what it's there for. Imagine, if you will, that you're raising a child and one day you teach him, look, Billy, this is called a fork. And Billy goes, Ew, I don't have to use a fork to eat cereal. What? No, this is, it's just called a fork. That's what we call- You can't tell me how to eat my food. Bro, what? And then he proceeds to use it to effectively eat spaghetti but refuses to refer to it as a fork. That's what I'm working with here. Me telling you that this is called a fork doesn't translate into me telling you how to use it. You're trying to dictate to me what kind of food I should eat. What? A fork is a fork is a fork. In the same way that a chord is a chord is a chord, it's a great chord no matter where you play it. It's called an E7 sharp nine. It's possible that you learned it as the Jimi Hendrix chord. Here's an E7 sharp nine. Here's the Jimi Hendrix chord. Did you hear a difference? No, that's because there isn't a difference. They're exactly the same. I played the same notes. But here's where you're missing out. Is this still a Jimi Hendrix chord? This is an F7 sharp nine. F sharp seven sharp. G7 sharp nine. If you only ever learned it as the Jimi Hendrix chord, it's possible that you only learned it as an E7 sharp nine so that you could play Purple Haze. And then you might not understand that you could take it and put it in different keys. You could play an F seven sharp nine or an A seven sharp nine, depending on what you wanna do with it for the music that you write. You could wind up laboring under the misapprehension that that chord only exists right there on E. One question that I see all the time is, do you need music theory to write music? And of course, no. But do you really want to be reinventing the wheel from scratch again? Making the same mistakes that people made for hundreds and hundreds of years so that we could have this thing, this guide, the manual to keep you from making those same dumb mistakes? Wouldn't you rather be standing on the shoulders of giants and all of these people who spent all of this time doing this stuff before you so that you can do the next thing, the next cool thing with it. There's no easier way to waste your time than by making the same mistakes that other people already made. They made those mistakes already and they documented all of the solutions for you so, so that you wouldn't, wouldn't have, have to do that. that. The least that you could do is show a little gratitude instead of complaining about how you have to learn something. Why aren't you asking, do I get to? When I found out that there was like a study of music where you could like peek behind the curtain, see all the like inner workings of, of how it was made and how it all worked together, I was like, sign me up. There's this trope like, oh, so-and-so didn't need music theory and they got along just fine. They wrote some of the great stuff. Like, yeah, are you them? Are you as good as them? Are you able to do that? Because if you are, great. People think that learning music theory is going to somehow hurt their creativity. If you're a painter and you learn the names for the colors, has that hurt your creativity? Because you know what blue looks like, are you suddenly not as creative of a painter? That doesn't make one f lick of sense to me. Oh yeah, now I'm gonna use the sky color. This one's a little bit darker sky color. It's exactly the same with learning names for sounds. If you are creating God tier music with absolutely no names for any of the things that you're doing, then by all means, please continue. But if you feel like maybe you could improve, this is a great place to start. And it's not as scary as it seems. If you just think about it as associating names with sounds and finding sounds that you like and learning the names for them, then I can absolutely guarantee you that it is not going to squash your creativity. If you think of it as a set of rules instead of a palette, then of course it's gonna crush your creativity. But you should study your craft so that you can better express yourself. 
right? And if you wanna really learn from other people's music, you have to have some kind of a system in place to be able to reproduce the results because otherwise it's just this rote memorization of learning where to put your fingers and then it's maybe good for doing covers, but that's not the same as like learning how to make music. That's giving someone a fish rather than teaching them how to fish or giving someone a fork instead of telling them that it's called a fork and that next time they can just ask for a fork. If you're watching this, it's pretty likely that you care about this because you create music. You wanna be better at writing music and writing songs. And if that's true, you're definitely gonna wanna check out my course, which is called Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting. It's 15 hours of everything that I know about writing songs. And you don't have to know any music theory to learn a lot from it. So you can get at that at the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you real soon.